Rasiheram, Nitani Rasiheram. This one posture of Hanumanji, where he opens his chest, he tears his chest apart, and he shows the world where his Ram resides. Mere man me basse hai Ram, he resides in my heart. Mere tan me basse hai Ram, he resides in my body, in every cell of my body. Yes. My
seed that are mine. When Hanumanji finally accepts the task to go into Lanka to do the bidding of Bhagwan Sri Ram, to try to locate Bhagat Sita, to deliver to her this ring from Sri Ram, and to reassure her that help is on the way. That was the mission. When everyone else, having examined their own strengths and weaknesses, felt inadequate and incompetent to carry out this task of Sri Ram, Hanumanji being reminded by Jambavan that Ram Akaja Lagitawa Avatara. Oh Hanuman, why do you remain silent? It is to fulfill the purpose of Sri Ram that you took out or you came to the world. Hanumanji then woke up, as it were, with his body rising to the sides of a mountain and seeing the dark Alvar and roaring like a lion. Suddenly he felt he was the chosen one. Goswami Tosidasi writes for us the first chapa is of Sundar Khand of the Ram Ram Siya Ram Siya Ram After listening to the words of Jamavan, Suni Hanuman the Hiday Ati Bhai. Hanumanji ke Hiday ko Bahut he breathed again. Hanumanji felt very delighted at heart. When he heard that he was he was the one chosen, now he's going to do this, this mission for Sri Ram, he felt extremely happy. Now that is a very remarkable trait and is a lesson for all of us. When you work with the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters, and you do so without any expectation of any fruit or reward in return, you do so with the joy of your heart, then you will be a perpetually happy person. The joy comes, the reward comes from feeling that you are blessed with an opportunity to serve. Now, if there are strings attached and there is an expectation for reward, then the whole concept changes. So the attitude of service here is important. It must be one that is based 
totally on selflessness. Now, when we talk about selflessness, Hanumanji, if you look at all these characters of the Ramayana, look at Sri Ram, Lakshman, Angad, Vibhishan, you name all of them. Check all of them out. And what you will find that each one has an address. Each one of them has a, a home where they lived. Some of them have palaces, like Sukhuri, for example, Vibhishan and eventually became kings. They had affluent homes. So they were pretty much settled, if you will. Where was Anumanji's home? Where did he live? Now, the answer is he didn't have a house of his own. Why? Was it because he couldn't afford a house? Or he couldn't build himself a house? Or, or someone uh, didn't uh, attempt to gift him a house? Uh, he were to make the king out of Sukhriv and to make the king out of Vibhisha. You can only imagine that when they became king because of Hanumanji's help, they would have said, look, Hanuman, this palace is yours. We're going to give you, you're going to live or you can live with us. Or these quarters are yours. I'm pretty sure they made that offer. But knowing Hanumanji, my brothers and sisters, Hanumanji was not after any material home or any material possession. He was not after any medal or, or a certificate of appreciation or a trophy or some recognition. None of that interested him. When he took on a task to, to work for the Lord, there's absolutely no expectation at all. And Hanumanji is teaching you and me. This is how our attitude should be as well when we work for the Lord. We should not work for the Lord because we expect our names to be engraved somewhere, our names to be mentioned at some level, and then if it doesn't, if it's not being mentioned, then we take offense. And when you take offense, then you will see you for a long time again. It doesn't work like that. You work for the Lord with a joy from your heart. A true work of the Lord is someone who is always happy, happy to serve. Suni Hanuman Pritayatibhai, he's so delighted at heart. Now, it's not going to be an easy journey. It's going to be a very tedious journey, a very risky journey, a very perilous journey. Hanumanji knew what it entailed, yet he felt so happy at heart because he's got a chance to go serve his Lord and Master. He knew the dangers that awaited him. That was not important to him. Tabalagi Mohi Parichyotamabhai Sahi Dukakanda Mughal Palakai. He says, he's speaking to his friends. You remain right here, however great your discomfort, survive only on roots and bulbs and fruits for your food until I see Sita and come back. And then he says these words. So we look at the second characteristic of your worker of the Lord. Go see the Ashura. Right? Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram
जब लगी जाओ चीते देखी हो ही काज मोई हरश भी से की हनुमान जी सेस The task will be accomplished for I am greatly pleased. Look at the sentence. The task will be accomplished. Not may be accomplished. The task will be accomplished for I am greatly pleased. He is getting good back. So the second trait of someone who works with the Lord is that the work of the Lord, number two, number one is happy. Number two, he is optimistic. He's optimistic. Something is telling him that the job will be done. When you're working for the Lord, you can't be a pessimist. You always must be an optimist. Always be optimistic. You must have confidence that the work will be done. He doesn't say it may be done. He says it will be done. He didn't begin the task yet, but he was seeing the results because he says, I am greatly pleased. And he's feeling good. He's feeling confident. He's feeling very adequate that he's going to do this job. So he has a lot of optimism. He has, uh, he's feeling good about this whole uh, task ahead of him. Then, those he does, he writes, so saying, Asakahi nai sabanaka umata. He bows his head to all of them. Shall pray. He bows his head to one of them. And if you're going to bow to someone, it means you are a humble person. So the third trait, number one, you're happy to serve the Lord. Number two, you're optimistic. Number three, you're humble. Anything in return. He just wants to serve the Lord. So that that automatic innate humility surfaces because he's doing God's work. The humble person. So he bows to all of them. Hanuman says his, his uh, characteristic humility here that we see. He always bows. You see him, he's always with his folded hands and he bows. Hanumanji's humility. You know, you think in today's world, someone who can lift mountains, strong as Hanumanji, who got a big muscular body, will be as humble as Hanuman. Hanumanji, he has it all, but he's the humblest ever. And again, Tosi Daji made mention that this word Harash again means he's, he's happy. He bows and he set out again with full of joy. And how do we do so? Chari Harashi Priyat Dhari Lagunata. He does so with Sri Ram enshrined in his heart. Fourth characteristic of the work of the Lord, number one. What's the first one? He's happy, number two. He's optimistic, number three. He's what? Proud. He's humble. Number four, fourth characteristic is he is faithful. He enshrines Sri Ram in his heart, which means he's submitting to a higher force. He himself can do the job, but yet he must tap into that source of power. So here we see Hanumanji's faith in Sri Ram surfacing again. All these are qualities that you can have read between the lines of Sri Hanumanji that we can learn from these verses. Now, Hanumanji is poised on a rock, on an island rock in this ocean. And he's going to use this rock as a launching pad to take off like a rocket into the air because it's going to be an aerial journey. Hanumanji is not going to take a boat to get there. He's going to fly because Hanumanji flies. He knows how to fly. Now we fly too, don't we? When you go to Florida, when you go to anywhere, any part, you say, I, I flew. How did you get here? I flew. I flew. So, when you are you to fly, what do you need? You need an airplane. You need 
a pilot in that school. It'll take you where you have to go. Hanumanji is his own plane. Hanumanji is his own pilot. Hanumanji is the own passenger. P for plane, P for pilot, P for passenger. The three P's of Hanumanji. He doesn't need a plane, he doesn't need a pilot. He's his own plane. And you can just imagine, no 747 can come close. You can imagine the speed that Hanumanji takes off into the air. And he's his own passenger. That's Hanumanji at work there. Defying the power of gravity, flying through the sky to do the work. He's not to walk or take a vehicle. He flies. When it comes to service to Sri he flies the highest speed to do the work of his master, Sri Ram. So he's poised on this rock. And Tosi Dasi describes it very beautifully for us. Ram, Ram, Ram. And verbally as well, 
Ram, 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 Ram. Sri Ram is never absent from his lips, never absent from his heart. He begins his journey by calling upon the Lord, Sri Ram. Before you leave home every day, my dear brothers and sisters, it exhorts all of us to begin our journey in a similar manner. Do not leave your home without that invocation, taking the blessings of the Lord. Sometimes you say, too, I'm too much in a rush, I'm too busy, I don't have time to go pray this morning. It won't take you much. It take you a minute to go and simply bow, and take the blessings of the Lord, uh, invoke Him before you exit the room. You know why? You know why? There are many who leave their home in the morning, never return back in the evening. Or never returned as they left. So many things are happening. In order for you to be safe wherever you're going, in order for you to enjoy it to go well, for you to succeed in whatever you're embarking on, and to return back home safely, it is only by God's grace that it is possible. And imagine knew that. He relied on his own strength. He knew how powerful he was. He knew how capable he was. But that was not enough for him. He needed also, he needed more power. So he needed the support of he whom he bows to, surrenders to, Sri Ram. So again, my dear brothers and sisters, a true worker of the Lord exhibits dependency on the Lord. Dependency on the Lord. He realizes that without the Lord, he could not succeed in this mission. And all in all, Hanumanji is feeling good. He's feeling happy. He's feeling blessed. And in this manner, he's going to embark on this journey to serve Bhagwan Sri Ram. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, no journey is without a challenge. Things happen. What do you do when things happen? Sometimes obstacles come from nowhere. So Hanuman has some benign obstacles and he has some serious obstacles. First benign obstacle was Mount Mainak rose up from the ocean and bid Hanumanji to take a rest. Hanumanji had a choice. He could have stopped there, he could have alighted on the mountain, he could have rested for the day or two days and continued the journey. Was he capable of doing that? You have a Hanumanji puja, you have a puja to do in the afternoon. So the night before you didn't sleep at all because you're so busy getting things together. So by the morning time you're tired. You have to make your prasad, you have to make all your preparations for this puja. Let's say the puja is at 1 o'clock or so in the day. Remember, you didn't sleep all night. And now at 6 o'clock in the morning, you know, that hour, 7 o'clock, and you're exhibiting signs of tiredness. And then like 9, 10 o'clock, you're almost done with your work. With puja, will begin in a few hours. And then some friends come along and says, why don't you take a nap? You think you manage? Can you? You can't sleep. You will not be able to eat it. You try it. You won't manage. Regardless of how tired you are. Because this task is on your mind. Right? Unless that puja is finished and you feel fully satisfied, only that you're relaxed then, then you can go and you can have a rest. And that's all. So Hanumanji, the same thing happened here. He's traveling now. He didn't begin his journey. He had hardly begun his journey. This mountain says, why don't you stop, take a rest? You seem to be tired. And Hanumanji touches the mountain. Hanumanji, he puts a gun, puni ki na pranam,
to the mountain. He said, my friend, how can I rest even before, before I um, finish this job? Can't even think of taking it. Thank you for the offer. I must continue. And the man he vowed not to eat anything at all. Was going to fast right through until his work would have completed. Then he would go into the gardens and try to have some fruits and uh, some delicacies. Now, when you're working for the Lord, challenges will come your way. Sometimes these challenges, sometimes God tests you, or the devil tests you, and tests you to find out what your motive is, how sincere it is, and see whether you're the right candidate to do this task. So Sanumaji is flying in the sky. The deltas from above, they're looking at him. And they wanted to make sure that he was the right candidate for this. To do the work of Sri Hatha. So they're going to test him. And they're going to test two things about Sanumaji. We'll see that as he writes.
जात पवन सुत देवन देखा जानु कहू बल बुद्धि She defeated her pretty much. And she lost the battle. 
Then she realized that Hanumanji is indeed very kind. The empress were pleased and she blessed Hanumanji, go, my son, and fulfill the purpose. So, this is the other trait of the work of the Lord. The other trait is that the work of the Lord, in addition to all his qualities, he is happy, he is faithful, he is humble, all of these traits. Now, this next one is the true work of the Lord is fairness. Fairness, because you know that you're working for the Lord, what is there to be afraid of? You're working for Him. You're not even afraid of death, because if you have to die in serving the Lord, you do so in dignity, because of our good cause. So, this, my dear brothers and sisters, these are the salient, some of the salient characteristics of Sri Hanumanji. And this is what Hanumanji has come to teach all of us. Teach the entire world. Teach the world. These are the virtues that all of us must emulate. We simple the life of Sri Hanumanji. That is why Hanumanji has become so popular that his flag is flying all over the world. I think if you go to Mars, you'll see Hanumanji flag flying. There's no place where you can pray. And that is why we give Hanumanji so much praise. Let's give him some praise tonight. Bajrang Maliki! Parapal Karumaliki!
so many brothers and sisters in conclusion tonight. So many lessons we learned from Hanumanji's life, from his service. And if we were to take some of these traits and apply it to our lives, simple lessons. Try to follow the example of Hanumanji. Do something good for someone as often as you can. Selflessly, without expectation of anything in return. This is what Hanumanji is teaching all of us. In goodness lies merit. Merit propels us to moksha eventually. When all these good deeds will accumulate, and eventually you have to take exit from the world one day, then you would have lived a good life, done many good things. With the opportunity that God gives us. <coughs> all of us are like Hanumanji. We are all called to serve in one way or the other. We all have the opportunity to serve. And when you see this as the opportunity, then we must serve the way Hanumanji serves. Then, my dear brothers and sisters, the purpose on earth, Ramakaj Ravitavatara, the purpose here will have been fulfilled. So, Hanumanji is our protector, Hanumanji is our benefactor, Hanumanji is our provider. Hanumanji is our strength. Hanumanji is the source of our courage. When you find that along this journey of life, you really can't go anymore, the feeling of helplessness steps in, whether due to a health crisis, or a financial crisis, or a relationship crisis, turn to Hanumanji. The solutions to our problems are in his hands. Literally in his hands. Now, you look at this Murti behind me of Hanumanji. And it's a very popular Murti of Hanumanji. And what does he have in his hand? He has a mountain. When you know the weight of the mountain, you don't know. You can only assume. No one can know for sure. How do you weigh the mountain? What scale you put up? You can even one rock you can weigh. What does the entire mountain? But you know it's heavy. Well, Anumanji is talking to you and me. You look at this Murti, he's telling a lesson to all of us. And the message is very clear. Simple message. You know he's telling us? He says, my child, this mountain in my hand is not my mountain. This is your mountain. I have lifted this mountain off your shoulders. Now is that comforting feeling? To know there is someone like Hanumanji who is going to relieve you of your burdens? When it becomes too weighty for you to carry, you can't carry it anymore. You simply crumble, collapse under the weight of these problems. And they come one after the other, so many of them. But you really can't, you can't you have a hard time to breathe. Hanumanji, he has the power. He has what we don't have. All we have to do is submit to the Lord. Be a true devotee of His. Believe in Him. Trust in Him. Confide in Him. Talk to Him. Converse with Him. And <coughs> lo and behold, miraculously, your burdens, that mountain of burden, is sitting on your shoulders, Hanumanji lifts it off gently. And He doesn't walk with it. What he does with it? Flatly is right. Take it far, you can intercede it more. You have to have that faith in Hanumanji. When we feel weak, when we feel inadequate and capable, turn to Hanumanji. He infuses every cell of his body with his strength and power that he possesses. And that's what all of us want in life when he does this. And then at the end of it all, he delivers to us victory. Hanumanji, the flag represents victory. Hanumanji himself is 
the symbol of victory. All of us want to be victorious. All of us need to be victorious in whatever we do. Harumanji is the solution. So my dear brothers and sisters of this Hanuman Jayanti, as we pray to Hanuman this evening, we shall make our offerings to him. Is our collective prayer that Hanumanji's blessing will, will radiate in our lives and of course we'll reach out to all the quarters in this court right now. The world's in dire need. So many things going on. There's another surge in the pandemic. A lot of variants appearing here and there. So we're not out of the woods yet. And on top of that, we have wars going on. So many things are happening in the world today. May the power of this Hanuman Jayanti reach out to all of these quarters and resolve this crisis in the world. We, we know Hanumanji will do it because he's done it and he does it in the past. So may the blessings of Sri Hanumanji be with all of us. Uh, in conclusion, I'd like to uh, make an announcement.